Lions and Bacon along with Tad Kosineski. Tad Cherry West getting set to kick off the township. They are 3-0, and and it's the same story with Tom Brown. That running offense has really been doing the job. Yeah, really establishing themselves really well around here. And they are the perennial favorite here in the Olympic Conference American Division coming in this year, Ed. Cherry Hill West, on the other hand, an up-and-coming team. They're going to try and play the spoiler tonight, Ed. Cherry Hill West will kick off. You see them in their white uniforms. You see the ball. The ball has been blown off by the wind on the tee. Now they are set. Brock Atkins to kick off for Cherry Hill West. And we are underway at Washington Township. It's a deep kick. Mike Kerner will look to take it. Mike Kerner on the return. Looking for room on the right. He's got some room on the right. And he slips up to the 40-yard line. Mike Kerner, Channel 13's Player of the Week, starts out with good field position for the Minutemen. The key to that right there, Ed, was that Cherry Hill West over-pursued into the middle right there and left a big lane on that right side right there. Real difficult for him to get by. First and 10 coming out right now, Washington Township. Well, you saw the enthusiasm coming from the Minutemen bench. They have a right to be They are sky high after beating Cherry Hill East last week, 42 to 21 as they set up an offense. Tim Huckle, the quarterback. Jim Colongo in the backfield along with Kerner. And Kerner takes the pitch and looks for some room off tackle. Is actually pushed forward for about six. A nice run for Kerner. Yeah, they're gonna, like we said before, Ed, they're really gonna be running the ball up the middle, especially with the all South Jersey tackle. Chris Marucci there, number 74. Keep an eye on him, an outstanding blocker. Gonna run to that, his side a lot. They give him five on the play. Cherry Hill West comes out with a 4-4 defense. Four down linemen, four linebackers, although they move one of their linebackers up in certain situations. Now second down and five. Kerner loses the football, it's loose. It looks like Cherry Hill West has got it. Let's see, it. the ball is loose. And it looked like maybe now the Minutemen got it back. It was in and out of the grasp of one of the Lions. And Cherry Hill East, or excuse me, Cherry Hill West is not able to come up with it as Washington Township maintains possession. It will be, however, a loss of three on the play. Yeah, it looked like a little confusion there between the fullback and the quarterback huckle there, Ed. That's a kind of field play. It takes a lot of practice to get that correct. Looked like the fullback wanted to keep the ball and huckle the quarterback wouldn't give it up to him. So the three-yard loss will now bring up a third down and eight. And Huckle is back to throw. Sets up the screen for Kerner who slips, well covered by Cherry Hill West. They really didn't give him much room to run and it brings up a fourth down. It looked like the play was initially going to Coney, or excuse me, number 24. Yeah, Coney out the left side. Quarterback Huckle looked at him all the way and then turned back the near side. That's really impressive there by the quarterback to look one side and come back the other way. Nice play by Huckle even though they didn't get the full yardage they needed. Brian Schmidt along with James Keneally came in on a rush from that Right side of the Washington Township line, bringing up a punting situation. And Tim Huckle, the quarterback, is also the punter. Back deep for Cherry Hill West is Joel Correa. He's wearing number 23. And also going back deep is 32, Michael Fulcher. Huckle just gets that away as some of the Lions are charging. It takes a favorable Cherry Hill West bounce, and it's finally down at about the 44-yard line, and that is where the Cherry Hill West Lions will set up. It's tough to kick the ball as it is. He kicked that ball into the wind, Ed, and as a punter, you want to get a nice spiral off on your kick, as you see many of the pro players do. He didn't get a spiral. It went end over end, and that's why the ball came up real short there. This Washington Township defense, although they gave up 21 to Cherry Hill East, a lot of people consider that a victory. They played well this season, too. And they'll line up against Cherry Hill West. Kevin Carlton, the quarterback. West has had a lot of injury problems on that offensive line, so they should be doing a lot of shuffling today. And they give it to Joel Correa, and he's got some room off tackle. Nice run by Correa, and he's close to a first down. That's got to be a good sign for Cherry Hill West that they can establish the run here, Ed. A, a team like West coming up young and upcoming, they want to put some points on the board early. Washington Township doesn't want to give anything to get excited about, like we've seen so far with the almost fumble and that run right there. Real nice play. They will now measure for the first down. For the Lions, Joel Correa and Don Babnu, the tailback, and they like to switch Brock Atkins in there to do some running as well. Garrett Brown, number 81, the ride receiver. Kevin Carlton, their quarterback. Again, their starting offensive line was announced as Rob Favrozzi, their tight end. Bruce Barker, James Keneally, Jamie Gaiman, and Mark Monticetti go across the offensive line along with Brian Schmidt, although they might be subbing some people today. They are really banged up on that line. They are just short of the first down, bringing up a second and one. Yeah, they also lack a lot of depth in their team too, Ed, so we'll have to watch for that if they get any injuries as this game goes along. Pretty inexperienced team is Cherry Hill West. First Washington Township coming up with a 4-4 defense. 
officials waiting to get everything set. Second and one for the Lions. Now the handoff goes inside to the fullback, Don Babneau, and he gets the first down a little more. He gets across the 45 to about the 44. The linebacker, uh, Jimmy Colongo, there was looked like he was coming in on the blitz. They tried to stop the run to the right, and it looked like they checked off the line and went to the left side. Pretty decent run right there, first down. So a good start for Cherry Hill West, as you mentioned, Ted. It can be huge for them if they can start by establishing the run. Cherry Hill West coached by Ike Smith, the former defensive coordinator at Glassboro State College. This is his third year at Cherry Hill West. Kevin Carlton again, the quarterback number 12. This is Joel Correa looking to try and spread it outside. He gets away from a couple of players, is finally tackled on a nice play by Alex Farkas. Correa made a real nice cut around the end there. The end kind of committed inside. They took the block outside. Correa with some pretty decent speed there. Nice run. Real impressed with the running game I've seen so far. It's the first time I've had a chance to see West this year, Ed. And so far, it looks like they're controlling that line early on in the game. And another five yard gain. Cherry Hill West, as you mentioned, with an offensive line that's done a lot of changing. That's five out of that, so it brings up a second and five now for the Lions. Again, the backfield is Don Babnew, the fullback. Joel Correa, the tailback. Now they pitch it to Correa. He's looking for the sweep outside. Gets close to the first down, now breaks it, looks for room on the right side. He's got it down the right sideline, and he is just short of the end zone. Finally pushed down close to the two or the one yard line. He had a great block on the end by number 30, Chris Jimenez on the end that brought him loose around the outside. He was the key as he froze one of the linebackers. Watch number 30 on the outside, froze number 42, Washington Township. Got a great block, the Washington Township player number 42. That was Kerner who got froze in, but what a great block right there. That was the key, Ed. And a win over someone like Washington Township could do just that. Of course, they'll have Cherry Hill East on Thanksgiving. I also heard saw a stat quickly here, and I don't think they've beaten Washington Township in a long, long time, if they've beaten them at all. They have never beaten Washington Township in their history. First and goal on the one as they look to take the early lead, and they give it to Babnu, the fullback. Nowhere to go. He's stuffed inside by a host of Minutemen defenders. I believe the initial hit was made on Washington Township. That looked like Schultz, the linebacker. Schultz saw the gap in there, filled the gap nicely. Real nice play by the linebacker, number 33, Adam Schultz. Made a good read there. I believe Schultz and also Jim Colongo follow in on the play, but you're right, Ted. Schultz made the initial hit there. Gain, I guess, of about an inch, if you want to call it a gain at all. Pretty much the showing the run here too, Ed, stacked up there. And the three men in the backfield right now, Atkins has come into the game as the third running back. Second and goal on the one. And Carlton tries to sneak it and he just gets in for the touchdown. Kevin Carlton originally looked like he was gonna be stopped and just snuck ahead enough. The ball broke the plane and the Cherry Hill West Lions take the early lead. Great second effort run right there by Carlton, the quarterback. And that's just what West needed to get themselves on the board here. Get themselves started, six nothing, really impressed. They didn't really get a great line surge there but got enough to get it in the end zone. Boy, and it didn't take them long to get down the field either. Let's see, it looks like the, all uh, right, they are gonna go for one. Looks like they might be thinking of going for two. And Brock Atkins is their place kicker. He's set for the extra point as Joseph Gimaz will hold. The extra point is up and it is good by plenty. So again, the scoreboard is out, but we are early in the first quarter and a statement early on from the Cherry Hill West Lions. They lead seven to nothing. And Kerner made a nice run back on the original kickoff of the game. He brought it all the way back to the 40. So let's see what he does here if indeed he gets the ball kicked to him. And Kerner will move to the middle and take the ball, looking for room on that right side. He's got a hole and slips through another fine run up to about the 39-yard line. So good field position again for the Minutemen. West had that covered pretty good. They spread out defenders pretty well up the field. They didn't have a lot of speed up the field, Ed. That's why he made it all the way out to the 30-yard, excuse me, 35-yard line. He made a nice quick cut to Kerner to get up there. The only like, problem, I'm sorry, it coming in this game too, is the offensive line had a lot of question marks here for Washington Township. Maybe they're being tested tonight for the first time. Mike Kerner stays in the game 
along with Jim Colongo. Again, Washington Township runs the wing tee, and Jill Colongo finds a nice hole and gets across the 40, close to the 42. And a great lead block right there by Kerner as he led the charge right in the zone, picked up the linebacker, knocked him right away for a big gain right there. Nice block on Kerner there for Kerner. Township coming with that wing tee. They just like to power the ball right at you. We've seen it for a long time from head coach Tom Brown, who again is a coach who coaches upstairs. He is right above us, coaching from the top of the press box. That's very interesting, too. Not many coaches do that. But it can't argue with 3-0. and oh. They give him a gain of seven on the play, so it'll be second and three. And now on the second pitch, they pitch it inside and running with the ball is Jerome Coney. He took the handoff, the second handoff from Kerner and he picked up the first down. Yeah, it was a reverse play run really quickly right there, Ed, but the it was run so quick that the West players didn't have a chance to react to the, the initial fake and they were pretty much in place already. Pretty nice call early on. That's more or less just to see what the defense, is how they're gonna react and for future play calling there. Again, the clock is out, so as soon as we're told up here how much time is left in the quarter, we will let you know. First and 10 for the Minutemen as they trail 7-0. This is Kerner again, slides through a little bit of a hole where he's finally stopped. First in on the play for Cherry Hill West was Brock Atkins on the tackle. Great pursuit right there by the West defense. That's something that they'll be watching for upstairs. A lot of pursuit, a lot of players, defensive players running towards the ball there. And that's a play where a reverse could come into handy. And that's me what they were looking at the last play. They give him three on the play, so it's second down and seven for the Minutemen. Now they go with two backs. They go with a pro set in the backfield. Huckle pitches it and he gets it to Colongo. Colongo's got some room, he gets a first down and more. Room down the left side, across the 40 to the 35 yard line of Terry Hill West. Kerner made another outstanding block there. That's a great call right there, Ed, because they were having a little bit of problems running the ball up the middle. So you spread it wide with two wide receivers. See how they have that wide open field, only two defenders out there. And there's the block by Kerner. Great call right there to use the open field right there. Boy, an excellent block by Kerner, as you mentioned. and. For Cherry Hill West, Lakeem Dwight came in and made the tackle or else Colongo could have gone even longer. And maybe Washington Township just realized, like I said, they're having trouble up the middle. So let's spread it and go to the long end of the field. We're we'll lead with our two wide receivers. And when you have wide receivers and lead blockers who block that well, you'll be successful. First and 10 from the 35 yard line of Cherry Hill West, Washington Township trailing seven nothing. And now Colongo looks for a little room off tackle right side, not much there as he is stopped by Brian Schmidt. Schmidt made a real nice play there on the read. Option looks fairly deceiving up here too. I think that could come into play as this game moves along. There you see the shot of the packed crowd here at Washington Township High School. Always seems to be filled in the stands for the Minutemen as they continue a tradition of excellence in high school football. You know what else I like, the night football games, Ed? A lot more excitement in night games. More people are into it. The kids are into it. It's a lot more exciting. I wish every team could play at night. And Cherry Hill West elects to take their timeout, their second timeout so far on this game. So that could be critical if they're trying to get a drive going before the end of the first half. They've already burned two timeouts. Could be a smart timeout, though, for Coach Smith over there. You don't want the game to get away from you. You do have a 7 nothing lead. You want to keep Washington Township away from that end zone as much as possible. Time to get the kids settled down and relax. Everybody knows they're on camera down Not there. Not going to get that crowd settled down <laughs> down there. Hi, Mom. So a good call just to get them settled down right now. Get them fired up on the line. Yeah, I'd be, if I was, I'm sorry, if I was looking on defensively for West, I'd be looking for something else going wide to the outside right now. Cherry Hill West does not want to give up another touchdown by Washington Township. After they've come down and scored a touchdown on their first drive, if they can stop the Minutemen on their second set offensively, then that can really get Township thinking a little bit or maybe a little more worried coming in than they were originally, realizing it's going to be a bit tougher game. So it's second down and eight right now for the Minutemen. And Hucker will keep it as he looks for room right side, and he's finally stacked up by a host of Cherry Hill West Lions. First in on the play was Donald Babnew, 34. And that was more or less the same play that we just saw from the same game, but run to the opposite side of the field. Once again, going the long side of the field. That time, Huckle elected to keep the ball. Had he pitched it, they might have got a couple more, but it looks like West was prepared as probably the coach came in and let him know, look, they're having success running wide, got to stop it. Third and a long three now for Washington Township. 
And we haven't seen Kerner's number called for a while. Maybe we'll see him get the ball in the backfield. But now he moves out. He's to the near side. You see him at the bottom right part of your screen, right in the corner. And instead, Huckle will give it inside. And Jerome Coney has some room. He barrels up the middle for a first down. The official roll, his knee was down at around the 17-yard line as Jerome Coney tried to do a little side dance to get into the end zone, but still a fine run in the first down. I hope we can get a, a quick shot of this coming up here. Watch number 74's lead block. He clears out two defenders. That's Marucci, the all-South Jersey linesman there. What a great block. That was the key to the play there. And Chris Marucci, like a bulldozer, took out two Cherry West Lions. First and 10 now from the 18 yard line. Now they go back to the pro set of the backfield. That's Colango to the left. Coney spread out of the game now and Turner goes to the right and it's the big fullback Colango and he's close to the end zone. They mark him just inside the one yard line as Jim Colango with a quick burst of speed found the hole and got down near the goal line. The key to that was Lakeem Dwight on defensively for West bit on the initial play. He thought the quarterback was going to keep it, believe it or not. He chased the quarterback, and that's why you'll kind of be out the right of your picture there lower, and that's why they had a successful play there. Nice call by Washington Township. And you see James Keneally knowing he was fooled, and it's first and goal on the one. Washington Township down 7-0, trying to get a touchdown here to tie the game or possibly go ahead with a two. Huckle sneaking ahead. Does he in the end zone? Yes, he is. It's a touchdown for the Minutemen as... Huckle went over the top, the cannon goes off, and it's a touchdown for Township. Power surge blocking right up the middle. Blue West right off the line. Seven to six ball game. Well, interesting uh, decision here. We'll see what they're gonna do. Huckle, very good kicker, one of the best in South Jersey as we look at it again. Fairly easily run up the middle. They are gonna kick it here to, to go for the tie early on. Plenty of time here, as again, you mentioned that Tim Huckle is the kicker. So both quarterbacks sneaking in on the one. Huckle has a strong leg. He has seven field goals this year. His longest field goal was a 44-yarder earlier. This but that was, that was seven for last season. I'm sorry. I misdirected you. I'm sorry. You told me it was this season. But the extra point, however, is good. And so we're in the middle of the first quarter, and the score is tied at 7-all between Washington Township and Cherry Hill West. And this wind, although it's a fairly warm night for October here in Washington Township, the wind might play a factor. There's a strong breeze. And it's taken by the up man, that is Fulcher. Fulcher looks for room on the right, finds a little bit of a hole, gets across close to about the 33 yard line where he is finally brought down by Jerome Coney. Right now we look for Cherry Hill West not to change a lot up, just go with what they had before, maybe try and sneak one around the outside again. Cherry Hill West has to be happy. They uh, Offensively anyway, they came out and scored and really looked efficient so far on their first drive. We'll see again if they try to go outside. We'll see if the Minutemen have made any kind of certain defensive adjustments right here. Probably, we haven't seen a pass yet either, Ed. Kevin Carlton again, the big weakness a lot of people said for Cherry Hill West this year would be inexperienced at quarterback. So Carlton learning on the fly here at Washington Township. And they will give it to Korea. Korea runs into a stack of blue and he's brought down. He's carried down by several Minutemen. First in on the play for Washington Township was Adam Schultz for the tackle. The coaches are telling him to calm down out there. Very fired up out there is number 33, Adam Schultz. Almost picked up a flag there for a little bit of dangerous play out there. So with the forward progress, they actually give him about a two yard gain, call it second and eight. Watch the replay again. Look at how Township closes that gap inside. They're stacking that middle, Ed. Until West throws the ball, they're going to be stacking that middle. So again, second and eight now for Cherry Hill West. The score tied at seven here in the first quarter. Now Korea looking for that pitch again on the outside. This time he's brought down on the play as a fine job by number 76, Joe Scarver-Leone to get out there, but a flag is down. Yeah, it looked like out there could have been holding as they were trapping out to, or excuse me, going out to the right side there. And we'll get the call from the official in just a moment. Yeah, so far, it seems like the only way, that's the only way Wes is going to get the ball outside by pitching it quickly outside. Oh, it's against Washington Township, Well, there, there were two penalties there. There was the holding penalty, but there was also a face mask against Washington Township, so those penalties will offset. That's a big break for West right there. We'll get the call. We have holding on Cherry Hill, face pass, Washington Township. They offset, we'll replay second down. So the play is a washout, it remains second down and eight, even though there was the penalty there to offset it by Washington Township. That's the first time so far today, early on, that they've been able to string outside and stop that sweep. 
The Washington Township does have a very excellent defense out here. Now the referees are talking things over again. Like I said, until West attempts to throw the ball or do something outside, they're going to key on that run, especially up the middle. It's going to be tough for them to run the ball as this game goes along. Ball's on the 36-yard line. Again, the clock is out here, so we'll try and let you know the time of the first quarter when we get it. And there you see head coach Tom Brown, as we mentioned, coaching right above us. And I'm going to be scared if Township falls behind. I know we've been hit by splinters in the past before <laughs> right above us, so we'll, we'll keep an eye on that. So far, Tom Brown, after that Cherry West touchdown, has to be a little happier as Washington Township has come back. So the play remains second down and eight now for the Cherry Hill West Lions. Carlton looks for Curry inside. He is stuffed immediately on the play as Chris Marucci picks him down for a loss. There you can see once again why Marucci is an all South Jersey player. Didn't buy the fake for a second there. Came right into the backfield, made an outstanding play. As West was faking the pass, as I've been talking about here, as we'll watch it again. There's that fake and right there. Beautiful, beautiful initial play right there by Marucci. Great job. And we've come to the end of one quarter of play here at Washington Township High School. We've got a good one going. After one quarter of play, the score, the Washington Township Minutemen 7, the Cherry Hill West Lions 7. We'll be back for a second quarter action right after this here on Jones Intercable Channel 13. Ed Banken back with Tad Kazaneski of Washington Township. The score is 7-7 as we start the second quarter. Third and 18 for the Minutemen. Excuse me, for Cherry Hill West as Carlton throws a floater and it's picked off. Intercepted by Mike Kerner. Kerner looking for room down the left side. Gets down to the Cherry Hill West 30 yard line. And that just shows the experience, the inexperience out there, quarterback. He let that ball go before the receiver was even looking. The defensive back was right there, ready for it. We'll take a look at the replay. I believe Chris Marcucci, again, the All South Jersey player, got in there and got some pressure. That's got a. That's got to really hurt West too there. Mentally, they were they were hanging in this game, and that, that could be a big turning point in this game. First and 10 from the 30, we talk about turnovers. We've talked about it in the past, how critical it can be. And Jim Colongo looks for room left side. Not much there, gets a short gain of about two down to the 28-yard line. The faking of Washington Township doing a real nice job too. At it. You can watch the linebackers and defensive backs as we get our wide screen. They'll, uh, they're hesitating a lot out there. They're not making quick cuts to the ball. And that's why Washington Towns has been effective lately. Second and seven as they give him a three yard gain on the play. Second down and seven for Washington Township. Cherry Hill West here has to come up big with the score tied at seven. I want to be able to keep Washington Township in check here. And now the fake as Huckle will go back to throw and there's nowhere to go and he is brought down by two Cherry Hill West Lions. Brian Schmidt and Garrett Brown in on the tackle. A great job by the defensive backfield for Cherry Hill West. They had a safety back on the long side of the field. Two uh, receivers went out there and they did a great job in coverage. That was a coverage sack there, Ed. That's a four yard loss of the play, so it is third down and 11 for Washington Township. We'll see if they elect to go back to the air here on third and 11. They're at about the, they're at the 31 yard line, so they at least want to get a shot Maybe move in close to give Tim Huckle a chance to kick the field goal. Huckle gives the fake inside and the inside handoff goes to Jim Colongo. He gets back near around the 27 yard line and gain of four on the, but Ted, looking back at the other series before the interception, Township really has done it defensively. They made some adjustments and really gave Cherry Hill West absolutely nothing on the outside. Well, basically what it comes down to, if West doesn't have any passing a game, you can just key on the run up the middle and you're gonna go nowhere offensively with the ball. And that's pretty much what's developing here. Wow. Huckle will attempt the field goal. This will be a 45 yard attempt for Tim Huckle. We mentioned he has a strong leg. Last year he kicked a 44 yarder. This would be for the school record too, I believe. It's a line drive that is no good. Off to the left as Huckle probably didn't hit it as high as he wanted to and it went off to the left. So Cherry Hill West takes over on downs. He kind of pulled a line drive to his left there and had he got a little bit more under it, he definitely had the distance there. I'm really impressed with Huckle as a kicker. Rarely in high school do you see somebody who could kick the ball at the authority he had. I think the reason they went for it is because of this pretty stiff wind behind them, too. Well, we saw Cherry Hill East a couple of weeks ago on Channel 13 when they played Edgewood, and they had Nick Mickemeyer kicking for them, the son of the former kicker of the Philadelphia Eagles and the Buffalo Bills, and he has an incredibly strong leg. He was hitting extra points, and then in practice, he hit a 45-yarder. 
So first and 10 now. They'll spot it on the 21 yard line. Cherry Hill West. Confusion in the backfield there. Carlton will throw and he loses the football, picks it up and he's finally wrapped and brought down by a couple of Washington Township Minutemen and first in on the play was Bob Ferris. Somebody missing the assignment there in that offensive line as Carlton went back to pass. <laughs> he took the two-step drop, which is really the only way they're gonna be able to throw the ball right now and he was hammered, almost lost. And luckily he got it back for what for West here. That's the only way they're going to be able to throw the ball, though, here, Ed, those quick one- and two-step drops, loss quick of, slant plays. That was a loss of six on the play, so it'll be second. Now they'll call it second and 17, a little longer, about a six-and-a-half-yard loss, actually. Second down and 17. There you see it for Cherry Hill West as they are pinned back in their own territory now. And they look to give it to Correa along that right side. He slips it off tackle, gets a gain of about four yards. Yeah, they're probably just going to try and run it out and just try not to make any mistakes deep in their own zone right now. This will bring up a third down and 12 now for Cherry Hill West. Yeah, they've got to get this passing game somehow together. I don't know if they don't have any confidence or what the story is offensively for West. They've got to establish something with the ball in the air. So on third and 12, we'll probably see Cherry Hill West go to the air here. And now we have an injured... Cherry Hill West line, it didn't seem he was down early on. It looked like both teams were getting in the huddle, but there you see him down now. The injured player will try and get a number in a moment as Ike Smith is out there to check on him. And Cherry Hill West coming in here, Ed, uh, pretty familiar to us. A lot of ex uh, Glassboro State players on their team with uh, Jeff Spector, one of their outstanding players a few years ago, coaching with them. Uh, there's also, I'm trying to think off the top of my head, they have uh, Vince Principato, also a player for Glassboro State, coaching with them. Ike Smith, when he Left Glassboro State, took a couple of his Glassboro people with him. Glassboro State this past weekend with their homecoming game against Ramapo. And, and we can refer to them as Glassboro State because when they coached for them, they were Glassboro State at the, at the time. We can get away with the with the non-name change, I think, early on. But So now Cherry Hill West back to their immediate problem, a third down and 12. Ball is on their own 18-yard line. There's a very interesting call here to see what Coach Smith does, too. Well, they go with an eye formation now in the backfield as they have Coria in the back and Babnu up front. Carlton will give it to Coria and he slips through a couple of tacklers. Nice run as a flag goes down. Coria slips to the outside. He's finally tackled just across the 20 yard line as Chris Engelhardt came up on the stop. Real nice fake right there by Carlton too. It almost looked like he was going to get back to pass, handed off on the draw play. Now it looks like it's gonna get even worse as it looks like a penalty against West coming up. Flag was thrown in an area that usually involves holding. And we'll take a look as the officials are discussing it right now. I'm sure if it's a penalty against West, the last township, do you want to decline it? I'm sure they will say yes. See what will happen here. Because like we said, without a passing game, you might as well just put him back deep in your own zone and take your chances. Depends on your thinking. No, that's it. Penalty is against Washington Township. Wow. Here's the call. Official sorting things out, and we'll get the official word in just a moment. We have a personal foul on the defense. Shot to the helmet. First down. Well, a personal foul against the defense. That'll be a huge penalty. That'll be a 15-yard penalty from the spot of the infraction. An automatic first and 10 now for Cherry Hill West. And a huge penalty right there as they'll spot it at the 37-yard line of the Lions. Well, that talk about shooting yourself in the foot right there, having them pinned in their own zone. Great defensive play. And then the shot to the head penalty gives them the first down. West now has second life. Let's see if they can use it to their advantage here. First and 10, and again, we are in the second quarter. The clock here is out. We'll try and keep you updated on how much time is left in the half. This game tied at seven. Cherry Hill West on their first drive after stopping Township came down. Scored on a one-yard run by Kevin Carlton. Tim Huckle coming back with a one-yard plunge for the Minutemen, and that's where we stand, seven all here in the second quarter. Carlton looks things over on first and 10. Again, he's got his two runners in the backfield. They split up in a pro set formation. Carlton with the pitch, and Coria looking to get outside. Stopped by Mike Turner, but a flag is down. Now, the official really didn't hurl that. He just kind of placed that down. Maybe he was just spotting the ball. We'll see. 
Hey, that was Jimenez, number 30, on the right end. Could have had a block to send him. There's your signal right there, the clipping against the uh, West. Jimenez could have sent him around the outside. That's probably who got the clipping call, number 30, as he kind of missed the block and tried to hit him from behind. The official just, just kind of dropped that out there, really didn't throw that flag, but we'll get the call right here as apparently it'll be a clip against Cherry Hill West. So the officials discuss things, and that'll bring the Lions back 15 yards. We have a clip. Offense. Repeat first down. So that's a huge penalty against Cherry Hill West. That will be a 15 yard penalty on the play. And it, let's see if they're going to mark it for the spot of the infraction. Yes, they do. So it goes to the 20. They need to get to the 47 for the first down. So if I do a little quick arithmetic, that would be first and 22 for the Lions. And once again, uh, West now returns the favor. They were given a gift, now they give one back. Now they're deep in their own zone again. Carlton might want to keep things on the ground here. They, again, the inexperienced the quarterback for Cherry Hill West could be their big weakness. Carlton has already thrown one interception. You don't want to have a turnover down here deep in your own territory. First and 22. And they do have three quarterbacks listed here. Again, Babnu and Coria make the I formation in the backfield. And they give it inside to Babnu. After they faked outside, they give on the inside handoff to Babnu. And Babnu gets up to about the 24. That should be a gain of four, bringing up a second and 18. And I was watching Engelhart, the safety there. They, they're they holding right now. They're not over committing to the run back on the defensive backfield. So we'll keep an eye on that as the game goes along. That's really all that West has to hope for, is that the safety start to over commit. Then you can attempt to throw one long in a post pattern. So second and 18 now coming up for Cherry Hill West, they come in and score on their first possession. Township answers back and things have settled down a bit now here at Washington Township as we are tied at seven all. Now they go with one man in the backfield. The single setback is Joel Coria. Coria will take the pitch inside, slips away from a couple of tacklers and he's finally brought down on the play as a couple of players got in there for Washington Township, including Adam Schultz, who gets credit for the tackle. Curry, I'm very impressed with him. He hasn't had a lot of room to operate it. Doing a lot of jo good job with second and third efforts up through the line. Pickup of three yards, I believe, on the play, so they bring it up to the 27-yard line. Yeah, we so we think there'd be a pass here, but the, with the rate things are going, it's, you just don't know what to expect right now. It looks like it'll be a third and 20. Apparently his knee went down to bring him back a little further. So third down and 20. And they're just going to run the football here. And Coria will look outside. He is brought down by two Washington Township Minutemen. Is getting out there was Joe Scarviglione to make the stop. Scarviglione did a real nice job in pursuit there. Nice job on the defensive front line right there. And Washington Township is starting to take control of this game right now, Ed. Joe Scarvaglione has made a couple of huge plays early on from his position for Washington Township. He's kind of been one of the players to settle things down defensively for them. And I also have to apologize early on. I was giving a lot of credit to Chris Marcucci is now his name, I'm told there. So I apologize to Chris and his parents who may be watching. It's Chris Marcucci, the all-South Jersey line, uh, lineman for Washington Township. Christopher Dilba, number 65, is set to punt for the Lions. It's a short punt. Kerner will call for a fair catch. Fine field position at the 40-yard line of Cherry Hill West. Scarvaglione nearly blocked that punt, too, and he came from the defensive right side, came flying in. He just missed that punt. And that's something more or less you see in the films the week before. You think he can go through a certain gap in the defense. He went for it, and he just missed that ball. So we have four minutes now, we're told, to go in the first half. Again, the score tied at 7-all. Again, the clock is out, so we're being told by the PA announcer just how much time is left. Good field position here for the Minutemen. First and 10 from the Lions' 40-yard line. And Kerner slips away through a couple of tacklers, finds a hole up the middle, room on the right side. There he goes to the 20, the 10. Knocked out of bounds near the five yard line. A huge run for Mike Kerner. Beautiful play off that right side there. Beautiful blocking out in front there. And a game saving tackle made. Looked like it was Giffen, number 33. As we look at it again, watch the misdirection to the right side. 
Great block. And look at those linebackers being pushed back by Marcucci. Beautiful play right there. Well, Kerner showing why he was the Jones Intercable Athlete of the Week, but I think he could share that honor with his offensive line. As Tad has pointed out, a lot of big blocks on there. First and goal now from the five-yard line for Washington Township. Kerner now in the backfield. And Kerner takes the pitch. He pushes his way close to the three about the two-yard line. As again, that surge comes on the right side of Township's line. Doing a good job of pursuit right there. Nobody held for the quarterback, though, on that play. Uh, that's something to look out for there on that play. The, the fake by the quarterback Huckle out there, Ed. Uh, nobody picked him up. We may see a play where he may walk into the end zone here. Gain of about three and a half on the play, so it's second and about second and goal from about the one and a half yard line, actually. So you can call it a short two or a long one. I like the way Washington Township spreading the field here too, Ed. Tougher to defend. And they give it to Colongo, the fullback, and he goes in for the touchdown, untouched. Jim Colongo with the huge hole off tackle left side, and Washington Township has their first lead of the evening. Good job right there on the lead block. That was Kerner that led him through the line there on the charge. He basically went through there untouched. And this is more or less how we expected the game to go here, Ed. As Jim Colongo found that hole and really went in almost untouched for the score. And Washington Township, after falling behind 7-0, has come back to take the lead. Watch it again. Beautiful. Look at 42, lead block right up there. Took the linebacker right out of the play. And there's the thing, there's the replay. That scares the heck out of us up here. Tim Huckle for the extra point. He puts it up, and it is good. So with about three minutes to go in the first half, the score now, Washington Township 14, Cherry Hill West 7. It's had a big drive right there after getting good field position. Cherry Hill West really hasn't had that great field position the last couple of possessions. Let's see if they can get something here. Oh, and there's man. a kick boomed into the end zone. That'll be a touchback. Well, we talked about how strong Tim Huckle's leg could be. We saw it right there. Man, I mean, even on that extra point, he kicked it off the scoreboard. That scoreboard's got to be about 30 yards beyond the goal post. That's going to help them down the line as they get into close games with some of these uh, upper echelon teams. That, that kicking game in special teams may help them out. So we'll see if Ike Smith squad can get something going here before the half. Two minutes. Only two minutes remaining. Actually, 2.39 remaining here in this first half. Minutemen leading 14 to seven. First and 10 now for the Lions on their own 20 yard line. We still haven't seen them throw the ball successfully. They've thrown it once or twice and both plays have just been a nightmare thus far for West. So I just look for them to run out the clock here more or less, Ed. And they do stick with the ground game and Corey is wrapped down. Chris Marcucci again in on the stop. Marcucci just beat the, his lineman he was competing against on the line, got in the backfield and got him from behind as we get a good look at the coaching staff right there. That five yard loss. And boy, Chris Marcucci along with uh, Joe Scarvaglione have both shown why they're two of the top players on this township defense. I believe one of those coaches down there was the ex-Eastern coach, ex-Highland coach, Fred Rolanda that we just saw down there on the field. Five yard loss in the play, second and 15 now for Cherry Hill West. Now they go with the I formation in the backfield and they go with three wide receivers here on the play. And once again, they hand the ball off inside. Coria looking for room on that inside handoff and nothing there but a wall of blue as several minute men come in on the stop. And once again, Ed, the key to that is they're keying on the run right there and they're just stacking the middle of the field right there. There's a neat shot for you, Ed. What's it like to play? There you go. It's our helmet cam. Hello. <laughs> Little headbutt for you. Man, oh man, these cameramen, did I like that. That is a neat little shot you got there. We're going in the game right now. We're going to run on the field. <laughs> Hope our camera is padded. So. Third and 14. Let's see if Mike Smith decides, hey, why don't we just run this out and kick and hope our defense can keep Washington Township from scoring. And they are going to throw. Carlton rolls right. He fires. The pass is complete along the right sideline. A short gain. The pass completed to Chris Jimenez, number 30. Korea did a real nice job in the backfield on the block there. Uh, they were almost heading for a big sack. Carlton was about to be drilled. I don't know if we're going to see as we look at it. Watch Korea, number 23, knocks two blockers, gives them some time. Real nice play right there. Let's give West a little bit of credit. They got a couple yards. 
That'll help them as this game goes along, even though it's fourth and long right now. Ten yard gain action on the play, so it'll give them fourth and four, but you know, a lot of times a blocker doesn't have to knock one of the pass rushers down. Just like that, just enough to stumble the two and keep them just a little bit off balance, good enough to keep them both out of the play. Let's, let's keep an eye on Scarvaglione on the right side. He, he came in unblocked last time. He's coming again. Chris Dilba does get it away. It's a fairly good kick. Kerner takes it at the 45. Now he looks to the left side. He's got a little bit of room there, and he's finally tackled a fine play by Chris Perone to bring him down, but still pretty good field position for the Minutemen. You can see how that ball went in the air, just about died up there. and it, <laughs> The pursuit barely had time to catch up with that one there. So they have some time here to roll along. We're trying to find out how much time. There's not a lot of time here in the second second period. I think we have about a minute 28, as I just heard through my headphones, a minute 28 to go. And the ball is spotted on the Cherry Hill West 46 yard line. First and 10 now for the Minutemen as they look to score again before the half. Now Huckle rolling right, he fires downfield. It is incomplete in and out of the hands of Jim Felicia. I tell you what, Felicia completely undressed Fulcher, the linebacker there. Fulcher had no idea what was hitting him as he was turned around defensively. And had the offensive player gone down the field, he'd been wide open because the safety was a little late in reacting. So an incomplete pass brings up a second down and 10. Again, the ball on the Cherry Hill West 46 yard line. Washington Township ahead here late in the first half, 14 to seven. Huckle made a real nice play fake there too that drawed in a couple linebackers there. Incidentally, the top 20 for South Jersey, or the top 15, has Washington Township number one by the Inquirer and number two by the Courier Post. Now Mike Kerner going in motion, as you saw to the near side. And there's a pass over the middle, incomplete, as Jim Felicia uh -oh. made a nice try for that ball, but a flag is down right near the incompletion. Real nice throw. It's just a timing pattern right up the middle of the field. It's some kind of a zone defense. It looked like nobody picked him up, but maybe there's an interference call coming here. There it is. Pass interference against Cherry Hill West, a critical penalty as that brings him into the range of Tim Huckle. And again, they still have time to try and get it in the end zone. And I'll tell you what, Felicia made a nice leap at that ball. We'll get the call. Defensive pass interference, automatic first down. You know, Ted, it looked like West had that covered fairly well. It was a fine pass by Huckle, but somewhere maybe right before the uh, Right before where the ball came down, there was a push because they spotted at the 31, bringing up the first down. It looked like they had some kind of zoom coverage on, too, and it was just a bang-bang play right up the middle. The safety might have just jumped and been a little bit anxious there. So first and 10 from the 31-yard line. Again, the foul came before the ball actually came down. And there's a pass wide open downfield for a completion near the one-yard line. Catching it wide open was Jerome Coney, the running back out of the backfield. He slipped down inside the five. It's first and goal for the Minutemen. I think Washington Township did a good job of reading route that right there, as we're told about a minute left. At the last second, West went into man-to-man -man coverage, and that's why, as we look at it again, you see man-to-man -man coverage, and that's why he got open there. Originally, first play, they had a zone at the last second man, and that's why they were so wide open. And this could be the game early on here, Ed. This would be huge for Township to get a touchdown here. First and goal from the three-yard line, and they push along the left side. Jim Colangio pushing his way near the goal line. Is he in? Let's see. He fights his way in for a score. What a run. Jim Colango struggled, struggled, struggled. One against about four or five and pushed his way with pure power into the end zone. Nowhere else will you see 10 players dance like that and then eventually make it into the end zone. What a great, what a, watch this effort right here. And the play looks dead right there. And they just dance all the way down the sidelines. He still doesn't quit, still doesn't quit and dives into the end zone. What a great play right there. It's like watching those old little schoolyard games in the grass with the kids. <laughs> the one big kid is carrying the three or four little kids and he's just walking into the end zone. What a play. Huckle will come on now to attempt the extra point and try and increase Township's lead to 14. The extra point is up and good. Over the scoreboard it goes. A tremendous kick by Huckle. So with under a minute left here in this first half, Washington Township now leads 21 to seven. We're one of the top teams around. West is not quite in our league yet. It's time to put him in their place and that's what they've done right now. So Huckle will kick off again. Fulcher to the right of your screen. He's back deep on the left and Corey are back on the other side. And Fulcher will take the kickoff, takes it just inside the 10, and now he looks to run left side. Gets a good block and then runs into where the block occurred, and he's brought down 
at around the 22-yard line. You just see overall, even with that kickoff coverage, how athletically skilled Washington Township is. A lot of good athletes out there, good size and good speed and real nice coverage right there. First and 10 now for Cherry Hill West, and they spot it now on the 23. Let's see what the Lions elect to do here. Again, there's under a minute to go. See if Ike Smith wants them to regroup here again with the shaky quarterback situation. We'll see what they want to do. I say let's let's just kneel on the ball. Let's get out of here for halftime and quit while we're ahead right now. And Washington Township only has one timeout left. If they had three, then you might want to be a little more yeah, careful. Yeah, they're going to kneel on it. Just let's get out of here. Either that or they're going <laughs> to... I don't know what that is back there. They've got to be kneeling on it. Yeah, they're just going to get out of here. Kevin Carlton will kneel down in the first half will wind down. So Cherry Hill West coming up with a touchdown on their first drive, but the Minutemen have come back with 21 unanswered points, mostly with that surge of that offensive line to take the 21 to seven lead. They still try and run out the clock here in the first half. Cherry Hill West has a lot of talking to do. They, they have just got to get, get something established offensively. They're just to they're out, man, to be totally honest with you right now. And there's the end of the first half, Ed. One half of play completed at Washington Township, and the cannon has gotten warmed up here. One half done. The score, Washington Township 21, Cherry Hill West 7. You're watching high school football right here on Jones Intercable, Channel 13. Tad Kazaneski has the play-by-play. -play. Go, Tad. That's Brock, Brock Ankins that kicks off the ball right there, and it's kind of fumble now coming to his left. Looks like in there is Farkas. Farkas still with some room, makes it to about the 37-yard line. Real nice run right there. Excellent run as he picked his holes very well. Let's throw out a couple of first-half stats for Washington Township. Uh, Jim Kalongo led the way 49 yards on eight carries, including two touchdowns. Mike Kerner had four carries, 45 yards. Pretty good average yard per carry there. James Coney, two carries, 20 yards. He also made a big reception for 28 yards, which set up a touchdown. Quarterback once again, Tim Huckle, has Jim Kalongo, Jerome Coney, and Mike Kerner in the backfield. Huckle, Huckle hands off the middle, gaining a couple yards, and there's that defense for West knocking him back. Well, the clock is still out here, so we'll try and give it the time as the third quarter just gets underway. Right there, just a simple off tackle play. Washington Township, of course, very content to try and get that methodical ground game going, just pound it out. A lot of credit goes to their offensive line so far tonight. They've really done a job and come on the last three series for Township. Second and a long eight right now from the 40-yard line. Tucker looks over the defense. Jerry Hill West needs to make something happen. There's another handoff up the middle right there. There's Kerner. He gains a couple to his right. Makes it third down here. And this is a play where West has to stop him right here, Ed. Yes, Cherry Hill West has to get him free and out right here. They don't want Township to even control the ball for a while because then they can start to wear down that Cherry Hill West defense. But Cherry Hill West is a team that, again, got a little bit of taste of victory last year. And this is the kind of game they want to establish themselves. And they want to stay in this game right now. It's still only 21-7. to Buckle again over center. They need, they need about four here. Pitch to the left side, going with it is Kerner again. He gets the first down and a couple more as he crosses midfield to about the 49. Well, you know, Tad, it's so tough if you're a defender against this Washington Township offense because they can throw Mike Kerner at you, who's so quick at getting around, and they can throw Jim Colongo. We saw that fullback doing some barreling inside. And just when you think you've had enough of those two, they can sprinkle Jerome Coney in there. A lot of different looks from this Washington Township backfield. Cherry Hill West needs to stop them on this drive. They trail at 21 to nothing. We're just underway here in the third quarter. You can see a good shot of Huckle there. Huckle with a handoff up the middle. It looks like Kerner again. Kerner, excuse me. Kerner gets about two yards on the play. Our Kerner, once again, our athlete of the week at Channel 13 is had a couple of real fine runs. Again, he came into this half 45 yards on four carries. He able to turn that corner very well. And he can move inside too, and when you've got that big offensive line blocking the way this township line has, you find a little more room to open up and try and get some, some positive yardage. Second and eight from the 48 yard line. Washington Township with control. They lead 21 to seven. Number one or two ranked team in South Jersey, depending on what paper you read. Here's a pitch to the right side. Nice play, looks like Coney with it, but a real nice defensive play there. That was uh, Porter, I believe it was, made a nice play, Potter. 
And John Potter made the tackle, but you can also give credit to Garrett Brown, number 81. He read that play all the way. He was not fooled. He stayed at home. When he got in there, he forced the running back to just kind of stop a little bit and try and look around, and that enabled Potter to get in and make the stop. Possible passing down coming up here, third and a long nine from the 49-yard line. Kerner and Coney in the backfield. One man wide right, that's Felicia. There's a handoff up the middle, and a little bit of confusion there. They're close to that first down mark, nonetheless. Coney with it. Nice run there by Coney. Slipped at the end, but again, he's a quick enough back. When you just open up a little room for him, he can find his way. And right there, he picked up the first down. A nice run there by Coney. He's got a real good acceleration. Once he gets find that hole, he is extremely quick in getting through that hole and really getting a big game. Offensively, Washington Township in control this game. They take it over now, first and 10. 38-yard line of Cherry Hill West. There's a play up the middle for Kerner. Kerner gets a couple more yards. Nice blocking up front. We're going to have a late flag down on the play. That came behind where the tackle was made, so it could be a couple of different things. We'll get to check the officials. Looks like an illegal block to the back against Washington Township. So it looks like the only thing that can stop uh, Washington Township right now is themselves, Ed, as they stop themselves right there and they'll move that one back. We'll check the call. It was illegal use of the hands. We'll see exactly where the illegal hit came. We're going to find out now from our referee. Illegal use of the hands on the offense, Washington Township. Repeat first down. Ted, it looked like there was an illegal block in the back at the end of the play. That's where the illegal use of the hands came in, and because of that, uh, Washington Township was set back, but still a first down for them. It's just back uh, first and 15 there. It was a late flag, too, and the ball gets moved back to the 44. It'll be first and about 15 yards here. Coney and Kerner in the backfield. There's a draw play up the middle for Kerner. Kerner to his left is taken down. Pretty nice read right there by a defensive, it looked like Babnu took him down there. Nice play. Yes, he did, and, and a couple of the Cherry Hill West defenders now are doing a better job of staying at home a little bit. Township has still got some long runs on this drive, but they've been able to shut them down at least a little bit. They have to play a little smarter, does the rest of this Cherry Hill West defense, to keep Township from getting a first down and trying to get the ball back. Might have got a yard in the play and make it second in about 14 here. Early on here in second half action. Tim Huckle, the quarterback for Washington Township. Real impressed with his foot thus far in the kicking game. There's a play as he rolls to his right, looking downfield, throws complete and falling down. Wide open there, making a nice catch. I believe that's Aaron Parada. Is that number 38? I'm, 88, I'm sorry there. I believe that's Kevin Caviston, the tight end. And Tad on that play. Jer or excuse me, you're all right, that was Calavita, uh, number 88. Jerome Coney made a great block because Huckle was about to get pressure from his blind side, and Coroni took out two Lion defenders coming in the pass rush. He basically blocked one, the other defender was trailing, and the other defender ran right into that block, so a key block right there to give Huckle the time. West having their trouble playing the pass defensively. Trailing it 21 to seven, they opened with a seven nothing lead. Here's Huckle, fakes a handoff, now coming around and wide open on the right side, going with it is Coney. And he's not down there. Coney came from nowhere around the end, and the defensive backs for West Ed didn't read it and didn't see it coming. Great play, perfect execution by that Washington Township offensive line. As you mentioned, Cherry Hill West just did not see it coming. That whole offensive line just made a search to the left side. Watch again on the replay. Watch everybody get pushed over to the left, and then it's too late, and then out goes Coney again with that explosive speed. A huge game, first and 10 again for Washington Township. Hakeem Dwight made the tackle right there, too. First and 10 from about the 15. There's a handoff up the middle in there for Kerner. He stopped after a couple yard gain. Kerner was tripped up inside by number uh, 61, Mark Moncinetti who got in there and made a stop. Again, Cherry Hill West needs some more of that. That will stay at home. When you go against the swing tee, they like a lot of little delay, misdirection plays, and that can really cause a problem for a defense. And he lost three on that play. Huckle lines it up over center. Has the two backs behind him. There's, there's a 
handoff to the left side there's and it looks like they're going with the their head I'm sorry, I bought the fake I'll be totally honest with you I bought the fake that was Weigand I believe the way they said Andy Weigand Andy Weigand right there with with again the fake being so effective it leaves so much opening and you've got a lot of quick running backs in this township backfield they're finding the holes and they got down there it'll be actually a nice game close to a first down third and about two now coming up a long two for township tremendous fake right there i was i bought the fake the whole way here it's, what a tremendous fake i can't say enough about it huckle over center again they need about two as they pitch to the right side, nearly knocked out and going with it, I believe is Kerner around the right side, makes it to about the five yard line. It's gonna be close. They may need a measurement here. Boy, that is a great second and third effort by Kerner. He bounced off one and then two tacklers and finally forced his way just to be able to make that turn it up on the outside and that extra effort might have given him the first down, we'll see. It is a four yard gain, so it's first and goal now from the five yard line for the minute man. Mike, Ker Mike Kerner. 5'11", 170, a junior, and one of the co-captains of this Washington Township Minuteman Ball Club. First and goal from the five. 21 to nothing, Washington Township looking for more. There's a handoff up the middle for Kerner, and he's close to the goal line, not quite in. Might be a yard short. Great offensive line uh, surge, though. Yes, and it wasn't, if it wasn't for a fine play there by Brock Atkins, the last one to get in there and stop Kerner, it's a touchdown. We yeah, talked about it all night, Tad, and we've seen it on three short touchdown runs. Just that surge of power from that township offensive line. And now they're in an opportunity here to really pretty much put this game away here, second and goal inside the two. Yeah, this will just about put it away here as Wes has really been dead offensively. Two back set back there. There's a play right up the middle in for a touchdown. Mike Kerner makes the score 27 to seven. Again, we talk about that surge of power. A wave of blue eliminates the left side of Cherry Hill West defense. Watch the replay right here. Look at that whole wall of blue right there. It holds up a huge hole. The big block coming by Chris Marucci, who, Marcucci, who we talked about again is all South Jersey. And he just leveled that inside part of that West defense, and Cherry Hill West just outmanned here. Marcucci, 5'10", 230. I'm sure there's some scouts watching him this season. Here comes the extra point attempt now for Huckle. It looks long enough, it is good. It's 28 to seven, Washington Township with the lead. Good shot down on the sidelines there, talking it over with one of the coaches. 28 to seven. Still got that halfback. Giant the crowd here tonight, tonight too, Ed. That's all right. We saw the double eagle up front with the linebacker, Scott McKinney. We wanted to make sure we sealed it. That's why Bobby called it today. That's all right. Little inside information there. Yeah, we do have a huge crowd homecoming, and I, we do want to send our congratulations to the homecoming queen here for Washington Township. Congratulations to Megan Farrell, Miss Homecoming 1993 here. And, not much of this crowd is left to enjoy themselves. Jam-packed crowd. Real good support for Washington Township. And here go the cheerleaders throwing uh, the footballs into the stands. Here's your kickoff by Huckle. Pretty respectable kick. That is taken in there by Curriera. A nice hit. He's taken down at the 20-yard line. Boy, you know, Ted, Joe Corey, it seemed like for a second, Maybe he didn't. He forgot the basic rule that a kickoff is a live ball. It doesn't have to be touched. He was a little slow in getting to that. Maybe he just didn't realize how close the Minutemen were getting. But he just was able to get down there and get that ball. It looked fairly easy, but if he had hesitated just another second, we could have had a real scramble down there. That's so the Cherry Hill West right now just has to keep their heads on straight here. Game is a little bit out of reach, but they have to make it respectable. Is Carlton going to take it over at quarterback again? As Babnu and Curriera in the backfield. Looking over center. There's a handoff left side going with it in his Curriera. Tries to get around the left side, but pretty nice play by a defensive back there to knock him down. Chris Marcucci again coming in. Pure strength right there by Marcucci. He grabbed him, just kind of got a hold of his uniform and just pulled him down with, with pure strength. Looking at the lines here, this might be a good chance for Kevin Carl. Maybe I Smith will let him kind of air things out a little bit. We talk about the inexperience of Cherry Hill West quarterbacks. This is a good chance for them to get some real 
a real test against a good defense, try and get some passes in. Second and five right now from the 25 yard line. 28 to seven, Washington Township with the lead. Just about midway through the third quarter. Calling an audible at the line up there is Carlton. Carlton back to pass, throws near side and it's intercepted. What a great defensive play. Alex Farkas made a great play and tell you what Ed, that's the second time Carlton's thrown the ball without the receiver looking. And Alex Farkas read that play all the way. Uh, even if the receiver was turned around in time, I don't think he catched that ball. And as soon as Carlton went back, watch him, he takes that look right away to the left. You talk about how defenders can read quarterback's eyes. Carlton really just looked right over there and the interception was made by Farkas. Great play. And I'll tell you what happened on that play. The wide receiver, Lakeem Dwight, must not have heard the audible because of the crowd. He was blocking downfield. He wasn't even expecting a pass. We go back to live action. There's that reverse again. There's Coney going with it. He's taken down about the 25 yard line. That had to be what happened. He didn't hear the audible, Ed. Yeah, I would agree. He Again, I think even if he's turned around, it's tougher to catch that ball. Uh, it's a little tough. He's down near that township side of the field to the near side, so he might have had trouble with the crowd and with the township sideline. But now Washington Township already up 28 to seven, pretty much got this victory put away. They can really just take over now because Terrio West defense has got to be getting very weary out there. About the only thing Washington Township has to worry about now is the cheerleaders' arms after every touchdown. There's another draw play up the middle. Real nice play. That's Kerner with it. Kerner close to the first down marker too. Well, you just can't say enough about this Washington Township offensive line. Chris Marcucci up there. Joe Scaraglione up there too. This offensive line of Township is just bowling, bowling this Cherry Hill West defense away as they are just opening up holes left and right. Just so tough to stop. I think the uh, <laughs> the people holding the chains fell asleep. The referee had to signal four times to move the chains. They weren't paying attention. Well, they shouldn't, they shouldn't be too tired if Washington Township gets the ball because, again, after that 7 nothing league, Washington Township, as you mentioned earlier, Ted, just said, okay, it's time to show these guys you know, who we are and the difference right here of talent. First and 10 from the 21. Here's a play. Now it's going to be kept by the quarterback, Huckle. Huckle to about the 17-yard line. Looked like he might have pitched it to Coney for a second, but he elected to keep it. I'm wondering if that was a play Washington Township run where Huckle says, okay, take a look that way. If you think Coney can get it, he's got a good shot, then go ahead and pitch it. If not, run it. Tell you what, Huckle made a fairly nice run, picked up about four yards in that play. He made a couple of nice moves. Pretty nice read there, too. Having Playing a real smart game out there is Huckle. As Coney came in reverse again on that play, in motion, actually. Huckle over center, back to pass. Looking, throws in the end zone, wide open, and a little bit short on the pass. And Calavita there in the end zone was wide open. Another defensive backfield breakdown, Ed. Yeah, so Mike Calavita, as you mentioned, had wide open, but he slipped. Again, the throw was low, but if he doesn't slip, he might be able to run up and maybe try and shoestring that ball. And Sherry Hill West, watch it again here. You mentioned it, Ted. Look how wide open he is. Just a breakdown in the secondary. One, Where? two, three, four, five guys, a half circle around him. Nobody near him, but fortunately for Cherry Hill West, the throw is low and also uh, the receiver six. slips on the play. Third and six right now. Huckle back to pass again, rolling to his left. He's going to run with it. He gets the first down and gets to about the eight yard line as Huckle was looking to run with that ball all the way. And Huckle got another fine block outside by his running back coming up in the play. There are a couple of backs out there. Number 22, Andy Weglin, who's quietly come in, made a couple of fine plays, then made another good stop. And another good block action, that play to set things up. That freed things just enough on that outside for Huckle to slide in and get a strong gain. So first down and goal again for the Minutemen. Get ready for the cannon, I think it's coming. I'm telling you what, Ed, we may see the subs after this, uh, if they get it in the end zone here. Huckle back to pass, looks in the end zone, fires in the hands and dropped of Calavita out there. Right in his hands, a beautiful pass, he flat out dropped it. Well, a well executed play here as the third quarter comes to an end and the Minutemen in command, Tad. Yeah, they all have their four fingers up right now. So now that we've ended three quarters, we will take a break at Washington Township High School to score. Washington Township 28, Cherry Hill West 7. We'll be back for more high school football on Channel 13 after this.
of a party atmosphere for Washington Township. Just get done playing Louie Louie. They have a second down from the eight yard line. Second and goal. They lead it 28 to seven. Looking for 34. Coney goes in motion. Dropping back to pass is Huckle rolling right. He may run with it. He is going to run with it. Dives in the end zone and he's in for a touchdown. What a great athletic effort by Tim Huckle and Duck. Man, oh man, 34 to seven is your score. But Tim Huckle made a great pump fake and just drew the defenders back enough and then, I'll tell you, for a quarterback, Huckle's very mobile. He moves very well to get it. Watch the replay again. Now, Huckle is gonna roll right. Again, another great block right there you saw by Cody. Made that one pump fake and by then it's too late for the West defenders to get up. Another touchdown for this Washington Township machine thanks to that offensive line. Yeah, and that fake was the key there because when he throws the fake, they have to respect the pass and that's what got him into the end zone. As Huckle in to kick, the extra point is up and it is good. It's 35 to seven, Washington Township. To the box. Crowd getting into it here. Huckle, line drive kick. I don't think they're gonna chance to take this one back and it goes out for a touchback and West will take over first and 10 from their own 20. Well, that's two Tim, T Tim Huckle is booted into the end zone so far tonight. He has a strong leg. He's got two touchdowns as well. Cherry Hill West, again, you, you, you have to feel for Ike Smith. It's a tough situation for him. He's trying to get better and better. He's really in the wrong conference. The Olympic American just loaded in Washington Township again showing why they're one of the premier teams in South Jersey Group 4. Here comes Cherry Hill West out of the huddle, trailing at 35 to seven. First and 10, Ke Kevin Carlton, the quarterback, looks over center. There's a fake handoff, he rolls to his right, looks down the field, hitting a great play right there. Making a nice catch, I believe that was number 81, Ed. Garrett Brown made a nice play. 87 made a nice play. That's Favuzzi just in the game for the first time. First down, first time they've made a pretty decent passing play, too. Yes, and Favuzzi did a nice job. He caught that ball over the middle. Watch the replay. He knows he's going to get popped there. He gets it hard, and he does a fine job to hold on to that football for the reception. Calavito on the hit right there. First and 10 for Cherry Hill West. They've really got some catching up to do. They won the first two or three minutes of the game, and from since then, it's been Washington Township all the way. A little confusion now in the backfield, maybe an audible. They spread it out wide. Carlton back to pass again, rolling to his left. Being chased, running out of time, gets it off and it's complete on the far side. Maybe against a little bit of a prevent defense out there as they're giving him the passing zone. Complete out there, number 40 made to catch Lakeem Dwight. That was a fine play by Carlton to hang in there. Had the time for a while, there was good coverage. Then he made the play happen. Watch the replay right here. Okay, he stays in the pocket, and over there he's gonna roll to the left. Now he could just panic, throw it away, run out of bounds, but he takes his time with the rush, finds the open receiver on that left side. As you mentioned, Township and a bit more of a prevent defense, a softer defense, enabling the receiver to get open. They're just dropping back, just looking to take some time off the clock here. Now there's a play rolling right side with this Carlton. Nearly hit and he is taken down from behind on a beautiful defensive play by who else? Chris Marcucci. And Randy Cook of Cherry Hill West had a choice of two oncoming township tacklers to block. He blocked the wrong one. But he should have blocked Marcucci, who's just so talented. He can get so quick into that hole and make the tackle. And Marcucci stepping out of the game right now. He gets a hand from this crowd. What an outstanding game the captain is having. 5'10", 230, and he can beat both of us in a race. <laughs> Unbelievable. Second and 10 right now. He could, beat, he could beat me in a race if he was walking and I was running. <laughs> Carlton over center, drops back to pass. The blitz was on. Gets the pass off amazingly. As the blitz was on there, it looked like Tom DeMarco was in there, nearly nailed him there. 
Township turning him loose on defense, not showing too much mercy for Cherry Hill West, 35 to seven deficit. Township, we haven't really seen that blitz a little bit. I'm sure Tom Brown wanted to try and get in there, especially after a couple completions by Carlton, just to kind of remind Cherry Hill West, hey, we're still out here, we're still coming after you. And Washington Township with now a third down and 11 situation here is in pretty good shape to try and get the ball back. When Washington Township gets the ball back, then we may see a new quarterback as Chris Engelhardt is warming up now on the sidelines. Third and 10 right now from the 45. Kevin Carlton, the quarterback, has thrown three times, four times in a row. Now he rolls left, the blitz is on again from behind. Still rolling, runs out of room, and he is sacked. Mike Calavita, number 88, made the tackle, but DeMarco was right there again. Boy, defense, defensive players love these situations right there where they know the team is gonna just come out and throw the football, gives the whole crew a chance just to get ready and tee off on the quarterback. Some, some good quickness right there on the play by Tom DeMarco to get in and force the play outside. Not much Jerry Hill West can do, or Kevin Carlton, he goes down for the sack. Well, let's give some credit to West. Though. They're, they're trying out there. They're making some decent plays out there. They're just outmanned right now, doing the best that they can. Here's Christopher Dilba in to kick, number 65. Nobody back deep for Washington Township here, Ed. Now they back off low. He gets a real nice kickoff. Furthest kick we've seen. They're just going to let it roll. It bounces back. Look out. Nearly hit in the back of the head there. It's number 24, Steve Torres. If that ball touches him, it's a live ball. I'll tell you, even the bounce goes the Minutemen's way. Is that ball bounced about 10 yards forward? New quarterback is Chris Engelhart, 6 feet, 180. He's a junior. We'll try and keep, like we said, abreast of all these changes. Going in motion in there is Weigart. There's a handoff going with it, his pace to the right side. Pace just in the game, gets another couple yards on second effort and nearly gets a first down. Real nice play by Nick Pace. Nick Pace, a running back, he's a junior, so he's getting a chance. Again, this is a team loaded in the backfield too. You talk about Kerner and Coney and Kalongo. It's tough for even some of the juniors to get in there, but Nick Pace will get a chance right now. Washington Township keep playing like this. He'll have plenty of opportunity to get into games like this. Second and a long three. Engelhardt over center. That's Pace that goes in motion. Now they hand it off the middle. Nice play on a fake and carrying it on, and there's Weigert. Andy Weigand, if I'm saying that correctly. <laughs> Andy gets the first down. Real nice run right there, Ed. Boy, they have some fast running backs, Washington Township, and you get that with this offensive line, and that's what you're gonna get. And these backup running backs are good enough to start on a lot of teams in South Jersey. And again, a lot of these are juniors, so Washington Township probably won't be going anywhere in the rankings for the next several years. Here's a play going with it up the middle in there and getting a couple more yards. Look at that bull rush right up the middle. Tremendous blocking up front. <laughs> he says he's still not down. He's going to turn around. He thought he had it there. That's number 33, Adam Schultz. He's a junior. And Adam Schultz has played well at linebacker so far tonight, now getting a chance to carry the ball. You do have to feel for Cherry Hill West a little bit. I think the, the wind is out of their sails a little bit as there you see the helmet of Washington Township showing their dominance right now. It can just be demoralizing for a team like Cherry Hill West to have to stand in here and face this line coming at you again and again. They are trying out there, but it, it's difficult. Second and about three, the backup quarterback, Engelhart, going to hand it off to the left side to Pace. Pace is held up, though, and thrown back. And that's going to make it third and maybe one. Chris Engelhardt is a junior, and he's going to be happy. He gets a chance to play here on homecoming night at Washington Township. A nice opportunity for him to get in the game. And he'll probably be doing a lot of handoffs. And hello, the helmet cam oh. has returned. We have a chance to get back in the game. Come on, we're only freshmen, but put us in. Come on. We're looking. Ouch. Oh, jeez. <laughs> Wasn't ready for that one. Third and about two. There's a handoff with the middle again for Pace. Looks like he may have the first down. He's very close. They may need a measurement. Man, that hurt. My, Ted, my head hurts, but still another fine play. Is, See, the helmet cam is proving quite effective to really get you to the game. Now, I dare our cameraman, Brian Zabo, to try that and actually get out on the field for a play. Then I'll be really impressed. See, this is what happens when the score is 35 to 7. Next Saturday at 1.30. like that. Highly entertained. Great shot out there. The Usual outstanding job as they call for the measurement here by our crew at Channel 13. Getting you literally right into the thick of things on the field. Great job everybody back in the truck tonight too. Looks like they're a little short here, Ed. 
We'll see what happens here. No change yet. They'll probably go for it here. Fourth and inches. Quarterback Chris Engelhart. We're leaving to starting quarterback Tim Huckle, who had an outstanding game. Fourth and inches. This gives Cherry Hill West something to fight for here. Over center again is Engelhart. Engelhart, quarterback keeper, looks like he got enough for the first down. So pretty safe and easy call right there, but well done by Washington Township, first and 10. The surge again on that offensive line. Craig Shockley into the game and and Dean Auer both coming in. They are sophomore and junior respectively, and also Greg Wilson, the guard, the junior, he also made a nice block, just powering in along the short part of that left side. Six minutes and 33 seconds left to play in this ball game. There's a play for Schultz up the middle. He gets about two yards, and he's still going. Adam Schultz doing a heck of a job on second efforts up the middle. And Schultz is doing a fine job, and again, this is his chance to run. He's played very well defensively tonight. There you get a good look at Adam Schultz. Made some big tackles in this game, too. He's coming on some key plays, stopping Cherry Hill West, and now again getting a chance to carry the football. Well, Washington Township, again, with six minutes now to go and counting. They're just trying to run out the clock, but you know they can't run backwards, so the surge continues again into the Cherry Hill West defensive zone. Second and seven. Here's a play again up. Now they pitch it far side to Pace. Pace is nearly run down, but escapes as he was almost wrapped up in there. But he managed to squeak away. A real nice play out there. Excellent play right there. And Nick Pace putting on his moves, getting everyone a chance to get a look at him. And Washington Township, again, very creative with this wing T offense. Like They really like to utilize it in, in every way possible. And they're showing, again, even in this situation, how they want to try a lot of different things and get ready again Deptford Spartans up next third and a long four from about the 11 yard line as over center is Engelhart Engelhart on a reverse now as they go left side near side in the end zone untouched for a touchdown Andy Wigan in the end zone for a touchdown the cannon's off again. This is getting unbelievable, Ed. Six more on the board makes it 41 to seven. Now watch Andy Wagen again on the play. Watch him go as he'll set up the extra point. He'll, what a great fake, too, as well, I'm sure we'll see as we, we look at it here. I was I was following Nick Pace. I was faked out by the play, a gorgeous play. Watch the replay right here. There's the fake, and then actually, you know, it gave it to, looked like he gave it to Pace, and then Wigan picked it up and ran into the end zone. What a great call right there. Outstanding play, crowd on their feet. Looks like Huckle is back on the field to kick the extra point, try to make it 42 here. Long enough, and it is good. 42 to seven, Washington Township in control. Oh, you're talking about Shawnee Brick Township. Shawnee is a team that's come on the scene this year in the Burko Liberty. You put them down. And they're playing in a, in a Liberty division with Holy Cross and Cherokee. Oh, we have another kick. Talking about the kicker down there in the sidelines. We do have another kicker. Feel like a part of the action here at Jones Intercable. Very impressive shots. Here's Huckle the kick. Real nice kick again, Ed. Over the head and touch back again. Is wanting to field it back there was Fulcher, but he just let it go over his head. Washington Township certainly well on the way. And keep in mind, Shawnee still has to play. A Cherokee and even tougher for them, Holy Cross, so they could very well suffer a loss or two. Jeff Maz, the quarterback, rolls to his left. Now he pitches in, running it with it in there is Fulcher. Fulcher gets a couple yards on the right side. New quarterback, as we said, just in the game, Joseph Maz, 6'2", 170, class of 95. Boy, you start to feel old when you hear class of 95, class of 96. And Joe Mass coming in. <laughs> and he is getting a chance as he runs a nice play right there. And you know, Cherry Hill West may be doing this a lot of times. You're getting a look at some different people at quarterback. Mass, First and 10. Mass again with a class of 95. So he's still got a little ways to go here at Cherry Hill West. Time winding down here in the fourth quarter. Mass over center. 
Hands off up the middle with some room running. Nice cut around the outside, but unfortunately he slipped down. That was Michael Fulcher again. Fulcher with a pretty nice cut back there. Fulcher really has not gotten a chance to carry the ball throughout most of this game. Fulcher's been the backup. As you see the happy Miniman on the sidelines, and they have Matt a reason. Murray, to, number 67 there. They have a reason to be very happy, but again, 4-0, still a long way to go before the season's over. One thing they must guard against this year is overconfidence. Second and eight. Second and two, excuse me. 43-yard line. Mez. Hands off the Fulcher again. Pretty nice cut back. Gets the first down. Michael Fulcher, for your information, six foot, 180, class of 94. Jason Burgess coming in on the stop, doing a nice job of filling that hole, holding it to a minimal game. Cherry Hill West, although they like to score, I'm sure they wouldn't mind seeing this one wind down and seeing themselves get out of here. First and 10 right now from the 47. Cherry Hill West trailing at 42 to seven. Believe it or not, that seven was the first seven of the game. And there's a timeout on the field, a little miscommunication, which will happen when you have the second string out there. As Joseph Maz out there, the quarterback. What, can you, what else can you say though about Washington Township? I'm really impressed. That could be the difference between making them one and two is their kicking game is outstanding. Deptford coming in is three and oh. Uh, their power rating is much lower though. They're in group three, however, they really will face their first real test of the season against Washington Township. Here's Maz rolling to his left. Now he keeps it, goes straight up the middle, gets about six yards. Pretty nice keeper there by Maz. Nice little delay right there by Maz. He kind of gave the defense a look, faked the pitch, and managed to move up for a gain of about six on the play. Cherry Hill West up against a tremendous obstacle tonight. Came out of the shoot early, quickly, and then after the first three minutes have done nothing. Young team, they'll have a lot to build on. It's Maz over center again. They're showing a blitz. Now they hold back, pitch it left side to Fulcher. Fulcher gets the first down and goes down about the 40 yard line. Fulcher just in the game this last series doing a good job of carrying the ball, Ed. He's been back to take some of the kickoff returns, and there have been a lot of them so far on the day. And Fulcher, as you mentioned, Ted, has not really gotten as much chance to run. We might see him get the ball a little more as the season goes on for Cherry Hill West. First and 10 from the 40 yard line. Time winding down in this game. 42 to seven, Washington Township leads it. Just over two minutes now to go in this game. Cherry Hill West will try and maybe get one last touchdown to close the gap a little bit. There's Maz, handoff up the middle, going absolutely nowhere. He's reading it all the way, and there was Tom Bershut. He's a backup quarterback. Maz has to run that play a little better there, Ted. You could see almost, almost nonchalantly after the snap, he was already looking to the left, and it was really a, an easy play for the defense to read, and they do a good job of stuffing it for a two-yard loss. They're number one for now. There's no doubt about that tonight. That was Tom Huckle there, the quarterback you saw there. He's looking up in the stands now. Had an outstanding game tonight. Here's Mans for West over center. Now he passes and in and out of the hands. What a real pretty play there. Just didn't quite work. Robert Favuzzi tried to catch the ball, but was thrown behind him. If he catches that, he may find his way to the end zone. And, you know, Joe Matt so far has shown that he can use that fake very effectively, except for that one play up the middle before that. He uses it very well, and we just gotta look at Tim Huckle on the sideline. There's a guy who really has a lot to be happy about as he you know, converted all his extra points again, has two touchdowns on the night, and tell you what, Washington Township on a roll once again. Third and 11 from the 41. Maz pitches the ball back to Fulcher. Fulcher is taken down from behind. A great tackle, Tom DeMarco. Outstanding play. We talk about a lot of positives on this Township team. One of them is speed. We've seen it on the offensive side with the running backs, but their defensive players are so quick. DeMarco has been close to a couple of sacks for losses, and quarterback sacks tonight. He's gotten in there quickly. That time he's able to get down there and make the play, so now, Cherry Hill West facing with a long fourth and 17 as they strike up the band here at Washington Township. Yeah, we're winding it down here. I'm Tad Kosineski along with Ed Bacon here. Jones Intercable, we have Washington Township. Tremendous game leading at 42 to seven over Cherry Hill West.
Here's Mans rolling to his left. Has two receivers downfield. He's going to keep it and run out of room and turn it over on downs to Washington Township. Great defensive backfield coverage there, Ed. Great coverage in the backfield, and who's back there quick again? Tom DeMarco really forced that play to force him out of bounds, and total domination continues to the Minutemen now they'll look to run out the clock. And once again, the quarterback coming back in, Chris Engelhart. He replaced Huckle. Not a lot of time left here. We're in the fourth quarter, winding it down. Once again, there is no clock, so we, uh, we just have to go by what we hear here. That sounded interesting. We're told now a minute and a half left to play. And there's a handoff to the left. Nice cut. If he can get outside, he might have a shot. He's pulled down fairly hard from behind. Nice run by Fred Warren just in the game. Man, oh man, it's got to be fun. I feel like I should strap on some pads here for Washington Township. So Washington Township player hurt and down on the field right now, too. Believe unofficially Kevin Caviston, number 86. That's no, 66, I'm sorry. That'd Dean Hour. Hour just appeared to have maybe been shaken up on the play, maybe banged a knee down there, but. Tad, you can go down, strap on some pads, get on the field. I'll still stay up here where it's safe. Okay, I'll go put throw, put a throw on the helmet cam. Man, oh man. Everybody doing some damage for Washington Township tonight. Engelhart over center. There's a handoff up the middle and stopped in there. Is carrying it that time was Kendall Carls, I believe it is. 5'10, 155, a junior. Township may have enough time now where they might be able to just go down on a knee and run out the clock. And that's going to do it here, Ed. 42 to 7. Washington Township dominates this one. It's had it. Again, Washington Township, very successful homecoming. Credit that offensive line for really opening things up. When you talk about perfect execution, I think you could see tonight after that Cherry Hill West touchdown, yes, Cherry Hill West did have a seven to nothing lead, but Washington Township really adjusted very well. But again, defensively, they scored and tied at 7-7. Cherry Hill West actually scored their touchdown with pretty much ease. And then when they came out in their second series, they got stuffed by the Minutemen and the Washington Township just took over. I think that defensive set was the key to start things rolling for.